Hi, this is Steve Plach, and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, a Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every show we highlight uh, one of the nonprofits in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz kind of doing wonderful, wonderful work, of which there are so many. And uh, this show, we're really happy to have with us Gina Cole, the Executive Director of Bike Santa Cruz County. Welcome, Gina. Hi there. Thanks uh, for having me. Absolutely. Uh, for those folks who don't know, and certainly everybody knows about uh, Bike Santa Cruz County, but for people who aren't as familiar with you, give people a little bit of uh, background about yourself and how you came uh, to Bike Santa Cruz County uh, as executive director. Um, I am, uh, I'm from Watsonville. I'm over, I'm from Watsonville, California, and I have been a pretty much lifelong cyclist. Mm -hmm. um, and for 13 years, I worked for um, Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance over in Watsonville, working on uh, tobacco prevention and moving policy around um, flavored tobacco products and um, t vapes in, uh, as we moved that way and um, you know, to protect youth, creating policy that could protects youth. And um, when the, the bike Santa Cruz County position came open, it was kind of my dream job, <laughs> like yeah. being able to apply a public health lens to something that I really, really love to do. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was very excited to, to be a part of that. Um, so coming at Bike Santa Cruz County with an, an education background as well, um, I was a teacher at Watsonville High School for seven years mm -hmm. um, before I went to PVPSA. Um, uh, it kind of just works hand in hand. That's part of our mission is um, is education and advocacy um, around cycling and in putting policy in place that helps folks um, feel safer riding their bikes and feel like they can use their bicycles for everyday trips, um, for commuting or for going to the store um, and just I increasing the number of folks on bikes um, by helping communities advocate for themselves for better green lanes and protected bike lanes. Um, Absolutely, and, and, and Santa Cruz is really uh, such a strong and robust uh, bike city and people you know know santa bike santa cruz county when it was people power you're following mm -hmm. the footsteps of community powerhouses like amelia amelia conlon and michael posner you know yeah. people who really championed uh, bike riding and bike safety and the expansion of that in the city so a terrific uh, position for you and you and i know each other well from other endeavors uh, for particularly the board at MH Can and Mental Health Client Action Network. So you have a really rich background in a lot of different areas. So we're really happy to have you at Bike Santa Cruz County. One of the focuses, uh, uh, Gina, of these programs has been uh, to really inquire about uh, how uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the sheltering in place protocols, the social distancing has impacted your ability to kind of pursue your mission uh, at Bike Santa Cruz County, uh, like so many uh, nonprofits in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, is really interactive a lot with the community. And there's a lot of uh, community outreach and stuff that, that needs to take place in order to be successful. So so how is this recent uh, kind of restriction on some of this uh, impacted your ability to pursue your mission, your really broad mission? Yeah, it, it really has affected us um, uh, pretty drastically, to be absolutely honest. Um, two of our biggest events um, that we do that are, as you said, very interactive and educational um, for folks are our Open Streets events. And we right. typically have an Open Streets event in June in Watsonville and um, October in Santa Cruz. And we were not able to, we're not able to hold either of those events this year. Um, so that's a really big hit for us as far as like the outreach piece goes and, and also for funding. Um, not that we make money off of, um, off of those events. Like we really don't, it's, um, it's pretty much everything is free there. Um, but a lot of our grant funding is tied to being able to, to deliver those events. Um, and another event that, you know, has been, affected will be our some of our fundraising, like our Run by the Sea, which is a, a trail run mm -hmm. that we hold out at Wilder Ranch, um, typically in August. Uh, again, something that we are not able to do. So that's, you know, kind of putting a little damper on it. We are uh, actually starting the planning process to be able to do a virtual trail run oh, 
Oh my, really? Uh, hopefully in October is uh-huh. is the plan. So um, we've a lot of our a lot of our friends in in the running and cycling industry have had a lot of success with online um, online challenges and online virtual races, like running on your own. So we're we're hoping for the best for that. We're we're pretty excited about that. I, I also have a running background as well as a cycling background. So that's um, that's definitely a great event out there at Wilder. Um, and it has also affected our youth programs. Um, we uh, work hand in hand with Project Bike Tech over in Watsonville in Santa Cruz um, and at SoCal High um, to, we bring middle schoolers to the high school and the high school kids that are in Project Bike Tech, which is kind of like auto shop, but for bicycles. So we, we it's that's not a Bike Santa Cruz County program. A bike, Project Bike Tech is it standalone 501c3, but they teach kids how to work on bikes. And um, and then also bring in the the business aspect of uh, running a bike shop and what the industry kind of looks like, and it gives a lot of kids that real hands on um, hands on experience and and lifelong skills. Right, if you can change a tire, you can move the world. Right. Um, so it's affected our ability to to have those programs as well. So we've shifted to kind of an online content. Uh, we uh, also shifted the the teaching part of it to focus a little bit more on our youth advocacy program. Oh, wonderful. So our down here in Watsonville, off the chain is our, our youth advocacy group. That's great. Well, anybody uh, who's ever been to one of the Open Streets events, it's just a glimpse. Those are wonderful. It's a glimpse of the Santa Cruz that we would all love to see. And uh, uh, people should go to, speaking of your youth programs and donations, people should go to your website. There's mm-hmm. an opportunity to do a little donating on there to really help uh, Bike Santa Cruz County do this wonderful work. And particularly you know, during these times, uh, uh, folks should uh, take a look at the website, You know, throw a couple of dollars your way and really help you get uh, get this work uh, furthered. Uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about uh, because it's so prominent on your website is, and I think of just a wonderful idea, is your slow streets program. I noticed that even though during the time of you know COVID-19 and, and sheltering in place, that program seems to be moving forward. And I think it's just uh, people uh, should really be excited about that. It is. We are working with County Public Works um, to develop the, the protocols, make sure that it's all in compliance with how the county runs, um, you know, runs a selection process. So we're, we're, we've been doing a lot of the writing, trying to pull, um, try to like pull some of the, the responsibility, not responsibility, but the time from, from county officials, because they're, you know, they're super busy one right now and two, everybody's furloughed, uh, for bits and pieces. So we've mm-hmm. been working hand in hand with Public Works um, and hope to get that up and running in the next, hopefully in the next month or, or six weeks. Uh, the fires have kind of put a, a little bit of a damper on that, um, just as far as like resources being pulled in in much needed different directions. Um, but the idea of slow streets is, is not new, um, but in response to COVID, that real public health response to being able to provide spaces for people to to recreate close to home right. uh, and so we're we're pretty excited I'm ex- I've put in an application in Watsonville for my street um, just because we've also noticed um, as things are being opened up um, you know more cars but we're still you know don't we're still encouraged to to recreate close to home and 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 you know do our walks and do our runs and and ride our bikes and there's still a lot of kids out. So I think um, especially with the onset of distance learning and kids at home um, Mm -hmm. and really young kids needing to get out and move that slow streets is gonna become a really important um, aspect of them being able to get their PE and their physical education and just their movement. Yeah, that's, I think it's a wonderful uh, program, as I said. Uh, have there been any streets designated in Watsonville? You were saying I saw there's some streets designated here in Santa Cruz, but I didn't C- see anything south yet. City of Santa Cruz rolled out a program um, pretty pretty quickly. They have 11 streets um, that were selected. They, um, they went through the uh, Public Works Department at the City of Santa Cruz. 
they had over they have 48, I think between, I think I can't remember, it was 46 or 48 applications mm -hmm. for streets. And so phase one rolled out 11 streets um, and that I'm, they scattered them um, kind of uh, throughout the city. They, there were a lot of different, and I'm not exactly sure all of their uh, criteria, but, um, but I think that they are very well placed and this will kind of be the pilot program. So I'm really excited to see how that um, is gonna be received. Um, I know that there were a lot of, a lot of people were really, really excited and really disappointed that their, their streets didn't get chosen, but um, you know, fingers crossed that this will run really awesome. We'll learn from it and then be able to um, add more streets in a phase two. And how Watsonville doesn't have an official program yet. Uh -huh. um, we're working with the city of Watsonville with their public works department um, just to make sure that we're in compliance with, with how, you know, governments run differently. And so right. we want to make sure that, that we're in alignment with um, how the city of Watsonville um, envisions it rolling out. And how appropriate really during these times, the pandemic uh, for programs that really encourage people uh, recreating uh, closer to home in their neighborhoods. You know, kids are home, they're, they're, maybe they're going to school online, parents are looking for an opportunity to get their kids out and immediately yeah. get, uh, you know, some exercise and whatnot. Uh, one thing I was curious about, uh, one of the pro uh, programs that really is so popular here in Santa Cruz has always been the, the bike to work programs. Yes. And I know that, that uh, we haven't, of course, been able to see that. Uh, how, to what extent is the Bike Santa Cruz County involved with that? And uh, can we look forward to maybe seeing uh, more Bike to Work as we move through the pandemic? Bike to Work Day and, um, and Bike Month is a program that Ecology Action rolls out. Right. And they've done that. They've supported that for years and years. And we, we are merely in a support role. You know, we will man... Um, send staff to the tables uh, uh -huh. when we have the events. And with the pandemic, it's, you know, kind of put a damper on those e events as well. Like we couldn't have a breakfast for everybody event. Um, there is uh, a bike tober planned for this month. So there will be a another bike month in October. Uh -huh. um, Ecology Action has a great uh, program, it, Love to Ride is the name of the app and you can track your, um, you could track your miles. Um, in May, they gave away, oh my gosh, I think they gave away $20,000 gift certificates. Wow. Um, for, so there were still a lot of really great prizes um, and a lot of great incentives to mm -hmm. ride your bike. Yeah. Um, and, I, and again, you know, we've also seen that reduction in traffic and uh, we have noticed a lot more people riding their bikes mm -hmm. um, for those everyday trips. Um, you know, although a lot of us, our commute might be like around the block before we go to work because we're working from home. So it, it gives a, it's a little bit different concept, but you can still, you know, I call my morning rides, my morning commutes, even though I'm not going to the office office, I'm going to my home office. Um. Again, we're talking about uh, donations. If anybody has uh, a few extra dollars, please go onto the website and make a donation or make a donation in the other way you can to Bike Santa Cruz County. But another thing that's impacted by uh, the pandemic, I think, is uh, volunteer staff. You. I know that uh, Bike Santa Cruz County, uh, like so many nonprofits, is at least to a certain extent volunteer driven. Uh, what's going yeah. on with that with you? You know, uh, we had this summer, we had a really fantastic uh, intern, uh, Chloe Ortiz. Big shout out to Chloe. And she is a student down at Pittster. And so she came to us this summer and she helped us roll out our um, our bike match program. Um, and a big yeah, shout out also to yeah. Greg Bratwith, who uh -huh. uh, kind of helped her with it. He let me know he was a teacher on summer vacation. And so I was able to <laughs> utilize some of his expertise as well uh -huh. to help rolling out the bike match program. Um, bike match is a national program uh -huh. and uh, we are part of this, of the network for our local area. So mm -hmm. Um, it started as a means to get essential workers um, bikes so that they could use that to commute because we know that metro and public transportation was um, was really at the beginning very heavily affected Absolutely. and folks were having a hard time getting to and from their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have, gosh, currently I'm, I've, I have 
13 requests and I, I have four bikes. So if anyone has a bike that they would like to donate, um, we ask that it's in working condition. Um, and if it, if it does need work, we have um, a little bit of donation, donation money that's earmarked for having a bike shop work on that for us. Um, if anyone wants to, any mechanics out there want to donate their time working on bikes, we're happy to, happy go. to have you. Uh -huh. um, we're specifically, um, the biggest ask is for mountain bike type bikes um, and kind of bigger sizes. So for folks that are like five foot six, five foot eight, five foot 10. Mm -hmm. um, so like a medium or a large frame. We have a, several small frames, but um, I haven't been able to match those quite yet. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a link on our website um, which is www.bikesantacruzcounty.org um, and it's backslash bike dash match. Um, and so if you've got a bike that you, you need to, would like to give a good home to, we're really happy to have that. Um, and uh, yeah, as far as donations, um, our youth advocacy group received a huge donation um, from Tobin Ortenblatt and Dylan Hollinger this year. Mm -hmm. um, they did a, they have this really great website called, uh, oh my gosh, Big Rides, Bigger Causes, huh. Big Rides, Big Causes. Right. And they encourage athletes, professional and, and everyday athletes to um, raise, raise funds. So it's a nice little platform on their website. And they raised um, over $25,000 wow. and they split that between Bike Santa Cruz County and Bike Bike. Black Lives Matter. Um, it was a, they rode a tremendous amount of miles. They rode 200 and, 212 miles and they climbed over 31,000 feet um, on, in a single day, in 18 hours on, nope. in the saddle. Yeah, yeah it was a, a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous uh, effort on their part. And that has really jump started our advocacy program with the kids. And people uh, want to know more about Bike Match. It's featured prominently on your uh, website. I saw that this morning as I was uh, cruising okay. through there. A uh, fantastic program. And, and I think it's particularly important now, as you pointed out, the uh, Metro Transit is uh, their heroes to be out. I take the bus myself, uh, mm -hmm. but they're still somewhat restricted to uh, central travel. And so people have to get around. People have to get to work. And Santa Cruz uh, really is an opportunity to really expand our scope as, as a real bike town. We've been a really great bike town, I think, in the past, but can always be better. And that route campaign really is being led always by Bike Santa Cruz County. Yeah, we are, we're really fortunate to be able to um, partner with Ecology Action and the county right now. We are working on an active transportation plan for the county. Um, and we would love, love, love your feedback on that. Um, Ecology Action is the lead on that, and um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to lead, look it up. I didn't. I'll look it up real quick, Steve. The the website for that. But we're asking for public input uh -huh. um, around the county areas, the not the unincorporated areas of the county. Um, there is a an interactive map on the Ecology Action website, and it allows folks to um, pinpoint on the map. Uh, places that are working, places that are not working so well as for cyclists, for pedestrians, uh, how we can um, come up with a plan for the county, you know, that, that would roll out over several years, but, but help us identify the places that we want to emulate and help us identify the places where we need a better bike lane or there's a gap in the sidewalk right. or the, the signals aren't quite geared for cyclists. Some signals aren't triggered when a cyclist comes in. So those, um, those are, that's the kind of input that we need. And I'll look that, I'll look that information up real quick and send that to you. But um, we're, we've done that with Scotts Valley as well. So that, I really enjoyed that. That um, was kind of a, my transportation 101 lessons, you know, coming out of public health, I didn't have a whole lot of transportation um, knowledge and, and expertise and I've had some really awesome mentors through both of those programs. And I think that's the challenge, really, uh, for uh, biking uh, here in Santa Cruz and Santa Cruz County. People see the bike paths and the bike the access uh, in the city, perhaps, and in their urban areas, urban core, mm -hmm. but they don't often understand that we're traveling by bike all over the county. 
And we mm -hmm. need to make that as accessible as possible, as easy as possible for people so they can re kind of rethink their transportation modes. And not only in recreation, but also work and in many, many ways. Yeah, as a as a bike commuter from Watsonville to Santa Cruz, um, yeah, wow. I have a lot of input. <laughs> yeah, not you know not now, but um, but until yeah until until COVID, uh, several times a day. And again, I can I would ride my bike in the morning, and then if I was there after dark, I could take Metro home, and that was that was great. I I really appreciate that. But I have a lot of input for the, you know, for the interactive map because. It, there are places in the county where it is it is difficult, and I understand why folks don't want to ride. They don't feel safe, right. and that's the number one barrier for people is that um, that they don't feel safe riding their bike. And so that's kind of our job is to to help create the policies that help people feel better about riding their bikes. Right. And of course, this program being evergreen will be uh, on our playlist a uh, number of times and it will be played uh, really throughout the year. But I did notice on the website that uh, you would have um, some cooperative effort with uh, the MA and uh, it was supposed that to be in October. And um, we'll mention it anyway, because you know whatever collaboration anybody has with the MA, we're much in favor of. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, we, we were really fortunate in February um, to, before COVID um, really, really affected us, the MA opened an amazing um, exhibit about the history of mountain biking in Santa Cruz. It was oh, really? a really, yeah, wow. it was really cool. And they invited us to be a part of that. Um, we we were able to, we did our, our bike valet on opening night. So we were able, which encourages folks to ride their bikes to places because we- Wonderful program, really. That's oh, it's it's such, it's so needed. It's so awesome. Um, and so, uh, but we were able to be a part of that. And uh, we were, there was a women's ride, a mountain bike ride on this, the following Saturday. That was a Thursday and on the Saturday and um, all kinds of, you know, special guests were invited. It was it was a really fun event. So wow. we were super stoked to be a part of that. Um, and the mo they've always included us in their scavenger hunts. They have they have a lot of really great interactive things that you can do with your kids, um, and that you can do with your kids on bikes. And we're really hoping that uh, as we move through the pandemic and uh, our sheltering in place uh, restrictions. Uh, uh, are eased a bit that we can get the Museum of Art and History kind of back into the community uh, when it's not cooperating with everybody on all these wonderful programs they have. It's really missed in the community and uh, everybody uh, should uh, take an av advantage of that when they can. So as we move through uh, the pandemic and we're looking at uh, now summer ending uh, and then into the fall, what's uh, what's What's it look like strategy-wise for you and your staff in terms of uh, of your programs and uh, and your what you'd like to see happen? Um, our biggest focus will will be on our youth programs. We're working um, in conjunction with uh, Project Bike Tech to be able to roll out a modified version of of the program, and we haven't we haven't quite figured out if it's all going to be distance. Um, distance learning as far as like helping middle schoolers learn to work on their bikes, uh -huh. but with these high school mentors. We are also really going to focus on the advocacy group and the outreach um, and teaching the leadership leadership skills to the to our core group of off the chain over in Watsonville. Mm -hmm. um, that's our biggest focus. We're also working, you know, advocacy work that can be done, you know, virtually through meetings and letter writing. Um, I encourage folks to look at Cal Bike. Um, calbike.org. They are the, the big uh, California bike coalition right. and they focus a lot on the state issues at hand. Um, and I also encourage you to, to donate to Calbike if you can. Um, and just in the, in the right now, right here, right now, almost all of our staff are volunteering um, with fire, with evacuees in some shape, form or fashion. Um, and so we're, you know, our, our goal is to give back to the community. 
Well, again, uh, look at the website. Uh, the youth program is, again, prominently featured, and there's an opportunity to make a donation there. Um, is the bike community in Watsonville, since you're down there, as robust as it is here uh, in Santa Cruz, or is it becoming more robust? Or you're it really is. Uh, oh. Yeah, Bike Friendly Watsonville is a, a great Facebook page. Oh, okay. um, and we've we have a we have a lot of cycling advocates in local government as well as a very very supportive uh, public works uh, department here in Watsonville. Um, so we are we are working hand in hand again with the county and with the city to help um, promote the the positive changes that are happening here. Um, we've been on a some really good calls with Caltrans. Um, trying to figure out how we can best support cycling mm -hmm. cycling here because we have two state routes that are that are our main street kind of like Santa Cruz has highway one that's a state route that's a main street um, we're the the conversations with Caltrans have been really really popular I mean positive sorry have been really really positive about um, integrating changes they have a new director who is very much in favor of complete streets and vision oh, really? zero policies oh. yeah yeah, I know Complete Streets is uh, one of the programs that I'm particularly uh, uh, hopeful of in Watsonville. Watsonville's always seemed to me to be very, very community oriented, very warm, intimate, you know, space for people. And so I'm glad that uh, uh, the biking culture, you know, really take root there and, and uh, see people uh, enjoying Watsonville as much as uh, we do when we're walking around there. Mm -hmm. Gina, we have a couple more minutes again. Uh, Gina Cole, Executive Director, Bike Santa Cruz County. Um, anything you'd like to tell us other than uh, perhaps go to the website, make a donation? I think about uh, uh, volunteering when the opportunities come up. Uh, anything to leave us with the uh, last minute or so? Yeah, any any questions or comments, you can email me at director at bikesantacruzcounty.org. Um, we will probably be having some, some volunteer stuff going on as far as um, a little bit of outreach. Um, that could mean putting up flyers. That could mean um, yeah, helping with, graphic design or website updates. Those are the kinds of things right now that we're really looking for volunteers for. So go ahead and, and hit us up. Um, if, you, if you've got some spare time, we would love to, to make the best of it um, and utilize what you've got, uh, the skills that you've got. And again, just support your local bike shops, support your local bike collectives like Bike Church and the Bike Shack in Watsonville. Um, and you know they're they're keeping us rolling. Yeah, you know, one of the uh, business openings that I found was most positive was when they had the bike shops open again because we have so many great you know, outlets for bikes here in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County. People can get in there, take a look at a bike, and then once you got the bike, then you think, well, now where am I going to ride it? Now where am I going to do with you know this? Uh, so that's wonderful. Anyway, Gina, it's great to see you. Great to talk to you. Congratulations, really, on on, on a wonderful place for you to land as the executive director of Bike Santa Cruz County, which is really one of the one, one of the cherished organizations in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County. Thank you for all your great work. I hope to talk to you uh, uh, again soon. We'll catch up, but uh, thanks for being with us. Thanks for the opportunity, Steve. Absolutely. You take care of yourself. We'll talk again all soon. Right. This has been all Steve right. Breach with uh, Nonprofit Spotlight and uh, join us next time when we highlight another one of the great, great nonprofits in Santa Cruz County doing terrific work like our Bike Santa Cruz County. We'll see you next time.